So you want to learn how to make a dress in Blender. That's what I'm going to be teaching you in this really cool, simple little tutorial. You can see this is the um, final result here that you can see on the screen. And instead of just doing the usual um, boring one piece dress like this, I really put in some effort to this one. I really want to make it interesting. So we're going to be making a three piece dress here. So you can see the three different pieces here and then we have these guys that attach at the top and it just looks really, really cool. I'm going to be going through all the steps. Now, I'm not going to be um, providing a character or anything. So I'm assuming you already have a character that you've animated. You just want to add a dress to it. I would recommend you start your character like I did here, just in a simple T pose. And this is just, um, I just used the meta rig system to rig this and I just did a simple little idle stand animation here. So those of you on Patreon will be getting this blend file here as if you want to use that. And I'm going to also include in that some more advanced examples of dresses in Blender. If you guys want to check them out, they're all animated. So that's going to be on the Patreon. But if you don't have that, you can still follow along. Just get yourself a free character online and um, we'll get into this tutorial and I'll explain step-by-step step how to make a nice fancy dress in Blender 2.83. Okay, so like I explained in the intro, I'm not actually gonna be showing how to make a character or a rig or anything. So in this case, I have this female character of mine that I just um, gave a basic human meta rig. And in my animation, I just went to my, I just went to my pose mode and I just, you know, with the keyframing here, just created a pose for my female character here that is at least 30 frames long, which she kind of is just in this T pose. And then I just did her kind of just relaxing with the arms to the side just something basic like this. And I just made it 120 frames long for this example. So this is not an animation tutorial. If you guys want a little bit more information about how to get your own character and animate it, um, the video I'm gonna be putting in the description below is one of my older ones that's gonna cover that. Um, that's with a male character, but it, it'll kind of, a lot of the same things will apply. So just letting you guys know. So once you have your character ready, you can get into this. So, so in this case, I would recommend you guys also follow along with 120 frames if you want, it doesn't really matter. So let's just come to our first frame where we have our character in a T pose. And this is where we're gonna start modeling the, um, the clothing. So if your character is perfectly in the center of your world, you wanna make sure you go Shift S and you wanna go Cursor to World Origin. You wanna make sure this 3D cursor there is in the center. So we're gonna go Shift A and we're gonna go to our mesh options and add in a plane. A plane is always really fantastic for starting with. And with a plane in your scene, you're gonna go tab into edit mode. And with all of the geometry selected, you're gonna go RX90 and you're gonna hit enter. And then you go to your modifiers tab and we're gonna give this guy a mirror modifier. And then you're just gonna go GX, move it over to the side. And then over here in your mirror modifier, you're gonna enable clipping. Hit one in your number pad to go into your front orthographic view. And then go G and kind of just move it in and those two are gonna to fuse together as you can see. So then you're gonna tab out of edit mode. You're gonna go G, Z, and bring this guy roughly in the middle here. You can see that little origin point should just be here kind of over the abdomen, just like that, and we're ready to go. So with that done, um, we're gonna tab into edit mode again, and with all of this geometry selected, we're gonna go G, Y, and move it forward. We're then gonna go into our front orthographic view, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go G and just move this in. So we want it to be about this much. And then we're gonna go S, Z, and scale it down onto Z. And we're gonna create our initial piece. So we're gonna just move it up to here, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just kind of go R to rotate it like this. And then G, keep moving it up. And at the moment, it doesn't look like a dress, but we're getting there. We're then gonna hover over here and go Control R or Command R. You're gonna see a yellow line appear and you're gonna double click and just add that in. Now, I'm just gonna also turn on my screencast keys so you guys can look down here and see the keys I'm pressing. Hopefully that'll help you. So I've just added in the loop cut here. I'm gonna go G and move it into about here. And then I'm gonna go Control R one more time, add one in here and double G just to kind of slide it over here and then R to rotate it a little bit. So this is what we have so far. We're then gonna grab this guy over here, this edge. So we're now an edge select. We're gonna go Shift D to duplicate it move it over here, and then we're gonna go E to extrude it up to this point here, okay? We're then gonna grab these guys here, and we're gonna go Shift Duplicate to, uh, Shift D to duplicate them, bring them down, and then we're gonna go E to extrude it down to here, and then we're gonna just go G and move it out a little bit, like that, and then we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate that, and then an E and extrude that down to this point here. 
And if this one, we're going to go S, Z, and scale it flat on the Z like that. So you can see where we're getting at with this. Very simple so far. Then we're going to go to our vertex select option up here. We're going to select this vertex here and just kind of even the spacing out a little bit, just like this, before we subdivide it. So just grabbing these guys here, just making sure everything is nice and neat and evenly spaced. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the top, go Control R, double click, add in the cut. Control R and roll in two cuts, double click. And then over here, we're gonna come Control R with our cur mouse cursor over here. And we're gonna roll our middle mouse a few times so we get about this many cuts. And what we wanna see here is kind of evenly spaced squares. So it should be a nice square. We don't wanna see any rectangles like this, for example, right? So that's a rectangle there. It's not really much of a square. So we don't wanna see stuff like that. Even this is too rectangular. So I'm gonna come here, Control R. Hovering over it, double click, just add in a loop cut there. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit A to select everything, and then we're gonna right click and we're gonna go subdivide. And then we're gonna come down here to our subdivision options and let's bump it up once, just like that, and maybe even twice, okay? So this is quite a lot of dense geometry, but it is what we need to make this work well. So don't worry too much about it. So while we're at it, I'm just gonna quickly with this dress selected, Go to the materials tab and this is going to make things easier for us to see so i'm just going to hit go new create a new material i'm going to call it dress one and then i'm going to just minimize the surface go down to the viewport display and just give this a viewport color i'm going to make mine a nice blue and then bring the roughness up it's just i like the viewport display colors then i'm going to select this piece at the top selecting a vertex just hit l that's going to select all of that loose geometry hit the plus here go new assign and let's just call this dress okay very creative and this has come down to the viewport display and just increase that roughness so there we have now these two distinguished colors and I think that's gonna look really cool in fact I might just grab the character here just give that a shader and just in the viewport make it a little bit darker and the reason I'm doing this because I just want to be able to see if this mesh is gonna go through and intersect with this so the different colors in the viewport do serve a practical purpose so once again, just select the dress now and um, tab back into edit mode. And we're just gonna simply do some attachments here. So let's go to our edge select here. So click on the edge select option, all right? And first of all, I just forgot, just select this part here in the middle. So just select any edge on here and just hit L once again, just to select that loose geometry and let's give that that dress to color as well. And now while we're in the edge select option here, we're just gonna go, um, shift and alt click on this edge here that's gonna select all of these edges here shift and alt click on all of these edges here and because they all have the same amount of faces or, or edges on both sides if you hit control E or command E it's gonna come up with this and we're gonna click on bridge edge loops and then while those are all still selected we're gonna go X and we're gonna delete faces in fact actually don't do that yet I forgot so we don't want to quite to do that yet but we are gonna do that soon. So let's just do the same thing here. Shift, Alt, click on here. Shift, Alt, click on this edge. Go Control, E, and bridge edge loops. And let's just do the same thing here. So just Shift and Alt, click on here. And then you just wanna hold in Shift and just select these four down here. So four edges and four edges up here. Go Control, E, or Command, E, and bridge edge loops. So now what we wanna do is we just wanna quickly hit A to select everything, and then E, and we just wanna extrude this at the back to here and now what we can do is we're gonna hit on our face select here and then we're gonna go shift alt and we're gonna click on this loop of faces here so if you go shift alt and click here it's gonna loop select these faces shift alt click on here to select these ones and then we're gonna come um, click on here holding in shift and just select these four up here just like that and with those ones selected, we're gonna go X and we're gonna to go to only faces. So it's gonna delete only the faces, but leave the edges. And then if we go Shift Alt and click on here, we can select all of these faces here. Shift Alt, select these faces here. In fact, just um, hit the C select tool, just hit C and hold in your middle mouse button and just deselect these ones here. So we only want these ones here selected. And we're gonna go X and just delete faces, all right? Okay, so maybe undo that, just deselect this face here and this face here. And then you wanna go X and delete the faces. Okay, in fact, let's just figure this out. 
Um, okay, just get rid of these two, just select them and go X and delete faces, and then we'll fix that in a second. And then we're gonna select these ones here, these faces, we're gonna go X, and this time we're gonna go only faces, so we wanna leave the edges. Then we're gonna go and select these guys here, we're gonna go X, only faces. Select all of these ones here, Shift, Alt, click on here, it's gonna loop select these faces, we're gonna go X and delete only faces. And um, so what we're gonna do now is just go to vertex select and just quickly select this vertex here and this vertex holding in shift and hit F and that's gonna put an edge in between. And just quickly do the same with this one here, select him and hit F. And that's just gonna fix that mistake we made. And let's just quickly go down and we shouldn't have these edges down the bottom, I forgot that. So just go to edge select here and just very quickly um, just select these edges at the bottom. So I'm just holding in shift and selecting them one by one. Um, so yeah, sometimes I make these little mistakes, so I'm just gonna fix them in the video. So just hit X and then delete edges. Okay, so what we should have is an opening in the bottom here, because it's an opening. We should have an opening here where the arm is and an opening here where the neck is. And so let's quickly go back to our face select here. And we wanna go um, Shift and Alt and just select this loop of faces here. And these ones at the back as well. Then we want to go X and we want to go only faces, okay? And as I was going to mention earlier, I made a mistake in my older videos where I went and I created a vertex group for the, the um, vert vertices that are on the ends here where these points meet and you don't actually have to do that. So I misunderstood some of the documentation. So if you see that in my older videos, you don't have to do that part. So now that we have all of this done and we have these edges where it's going to all snap together, and we have our open spaces where they need to be. We're gonna tab out of edit mode, and then we're gonna select our character here, and then we're gonna to go to our um, physics tab down here, and we wanna make sure we give this a collision. So go ahead and click on collision here. Then we're gonna come down to the, the soft body and cloth. We're gonna make the thickness outer 0.01, and the inner value we're gonna make 0.01 as well. And that's just gonna be essentially the distance between our cloth simulation and our character here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna select our um, dress here. We're gonna go to our cloth settings here. And then we're gonna to come to the quality step. So we're gonna make it something like eight. You can go a little bit higher if you want. I just think eight works well. And then we're gonna come over here down to the shape and just drop that down. And here we wanna enable sewing. We also wanna to come to our max sewing force and make it something like 21, hit enter. And we're gonna come to our shrinking factor and make it something like 0.1 and we wanna hit enter. Then we're gonna come down to the collisions. We're gonna set the quality steps to eight as well. And then we're gonna come and enable self collision. And under the distance here, we're gonna make this smaller. So we're gonna make it 0.01. And once we've done that, if you've scaled anything in your scene by like scaling it, whether that's your character or your, your dress or your clothing, you wanna make sure that with those items selected, you go Control A and you apply the scale. That's very important whenever we're running simulation because Blender works with real, um, real values. It needs to determine the scale of things to determine how the cloth's gonna work. And just to give you some reference, if I go to Shift A and I just add in a cube, you can kind of see the, the scale of the character here as well. So if you can try and match that, you don't want like a, uh, a character that's like 50 feet higher than this or something like that, that's right? So just something like this scale would be appropriate. And once you've, you've done that and you're on frame one, and uh, what you can do is you can hit your space bar and we're gonna watch this simulation play out. Okay, so you can see in this case, it's struggling a little bit. So let's go back to frame one. So what we could try here is we can select the character and we can come over to the, the collision that we gave to the character. And under here, we can also increase the friction. So I'm gonna bump mine up to 25. Then I'm gonna select the dress. And I'm just gonna go S just to scale it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna go Control A and I'm gonna apply the scale. Then I'm gonna to go to my cloth settings again with this dress selected. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to come to the max sewing force and bump it up to 31. And now at frame one, I'm gonna hit the space bar again. And I'm gonna see what happens if that fixes the problem. Okay, so in this case, that seems to be working quite well. Okay, so here we can see, so I'm just gonna quickly hit the spacebar to pause it. And you can also go with your dress selected, go to object and go to shade smooth. That's just gonna give it some nice smooth shading. But anyway, here we have pretty much a modern dress. Now this one, 
Um, I think it looks okay, but I think that these sleeves are a little bit too out for this sort of character. So what I'm gonna do is just quite simply go back, holding in shift and hitting your left arrow button. You can just go back to frame one and then tab into edit mode. And what you can do if you don't like that is this is quickly hold, go to our edge select and holding in shift. We're just gonna select these edges here and at the back as well, just holding in shift. Let's just quickly select them and go X and just delete those edges, right? And then what we're gonna do is just select an edge on here and hit L, and that's just gonna select all of this loose geometry. And then we're gonna go G and just move it up a little bit to here. And then let's just select these edges here, these four, and then select four edges down here like we did earlier. Go Control and E and just go Bridge Edge Loops, and then X and just delete only faces. And let's just quickly do the same thing at the back here. You don't have to do this, I just think it's gonna look a bit better. Control E, bridge edge loops, X, and then only faces. Now I'm gonna tab back into object mode. I'm in frame one, I'm gonna hit the space bar and I'm gonna see what that looks like. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Um, what I think we can do to make maybe make it look a little bit more elegant is just go back, tab into edit mode, and let's just quickly go to our vertex select here, hit Z and go to wireframe. And in your front orthographic view, just hit C and just select these vertex vertices here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go enable proportional editing, then we're gonna go S, X, scale it on the X, and then we're gonna roll our middle mouse button to just get a more of a proportional fall off and just scale it in like this and then R just to rotate it a bit. So just something like that, I think will look a little bit more elegant. So now let's just hit the space bar starting at frame one and see what we get. Okay, that looks a lot better. So you can see it's quite slow, but it's looking good. So here we have pretty much a modern dress, a fancy dress. So what we can do is also with this dress selected, let's go to our modifiers tab. And we're gonna give this a, um, a mirror modifier or a subdivision surface modifier, sorry. And then on top of that, we're gonna give this a solidify modifier. And here we can see our dress is just looking really, really cool. And we're still having some issues up here. So what we could do is just tab into edit mode. I think all we need to do here is with all of these vertices still selected, is just go G and just move them out a little bit. And roll your middle mouse button with proportional editing enabled just to give it a little bit more to work with. Tab out of edit mode, go to frame one and hit the space bar and just play that out. See what happens. Okay, so that looks a lot better. Okay, so that's really solving the problem here. And here we have it guys, a modern dress. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you how to cache this out. If you do have an animation and you wanna cache it out, all you have to do is select the dress or whatever you have, go to your physics tab. And in this case, we have 120 frames we're working with here. So we're gonna come to the cache under the cloth and let's make it 120 frames to match. Essentially, that's just how many frames it's gonna be caching it out on. And once you've saved it, so I'm just gonna go ahead, file, and just quickly just save this. And then we're gonna go bake and bake the animation. So I'm gonna bake this, come back, and we're gonna see what it looks like. Okay, so here is the final animation, as you can see. In this case, it's quite a bit slow. So just go to your, if it is slow in the viewport, you can just go to your modifier stack and just disable the subdivision surface modifier. And that should speed things up a little bit. So you can see here, this is the animation. Um, if you decided to go along with an animation and like I said this blend file will be available on my patreon Along with some other example blend files for this sort of dress thing and yeah So that is how you make a modern fancy dress in blender So this is a lot more interesting than just a boring kind of like drab Just one piece dress. I really thought I would make this a little bit more interesting for you guys And I hope you've learned something and you've enjoyed this and if you did make something show me on Instagram and um, yeah I um, hope you guys have a good week and I'll see you guys later.